Right, rates of change. This is a practical application of the chain rule. Now, um, with our differentiation, you must remember that we're always talking about a rate when we're talking about differentiation. So dy by dx literally means how much y changes as x changes. So it's a rate of how y is changing with regard to how x is changing. So when you get a rates of change question, there are some things that you should write down straight away. The first thing is the rate that you've been told. Then you want a formula that links the variables that you've been given. Then you want the point at which you need to calculate a rate. And finally, the rate that you want to calculate. Once you've got those four things written down, you should easily be able to see how to put them together to get your answer. And I'll show you this with an example. So we have a spherical balloon. It's being inflated at a rate of 5 metres cubed per second. We want to find out how fast the radius of the balloon is increasing at the point when r equals 4, r being the radius. So the first thing, we want to write down the rate that we've been told. So that's right there. We've got the rate of the volume, because it's talking about the balloon being inflated. So the volume changing over time. And the units that it gives us gives us the clue as to what that rate is talking about. So we have meters cubed for volume, seconds for time. So we're told dv by dt. So the rate, the volume is changing over time. And that's equal to 5. Next, we want the formula that links the two variables. Now, the variables we're talking about are volume and radius. So for that, we need to have the formula for the volume of a sphere. Right, next we want the point at which we have to calculate the rate. So we're told to do it when the radius is 4. And then we write down the rate that we want to work out. So we're asked to work out the rate of the radius as the balloon increases. Okay, so the rate that the radius is changing over time. So that would be dr by dt. Right, next, we think about how we could put these together. So given the rate of dv by dt, what would we have to do to it to turn it into d dr by dt? So we need to introduce dr and we need to cancel out dv. So we do that with multiplying by dr by dv, because then those dvs would cancel and give us that dr by dt that we're looking for. So dv by dr, would we get by differentiating v, so that gives us 4 pi r squared. But we want dr by dv, so we just need to flip that over and use the reciprocal. So dr by dv would be 1 over pi r squared. Now we substitute that back into our little calculation over on the right. We've got 5 from the question, and we've got dr by dv from the derivative we just worked out. We're doing this when r equals 4, so we substitute in um, 4 into r on our dr by dt calculation and we'll get 5 over 64 pi. And you should try to put the units in as well. And the units we're talking about is the radius over time. So the radius will be measured in meters, and the time is going in seconds, so it'll be meters per second. Occasionally, we don't need that green part. Sometimes um, you work out a rate and it's not dependent on a particular point during that whole process. Um, I'll show you one like that in, in a couple of examples. Okay, let's have a look at another one. A circular stain is spreading so that the radius is increasing at a rate of 0.5 millimeters per second. We want to find the rate at which the area is increasing when the radius equals 50 millimeters. So let's write down the information that we've been given. First of all, we're told the rate which is dr by dt, so that's how the radius is increasing over time. Next, we want a formula, so we're told it's a circular stain, so we can work out the area, which will be pi r squared. We're going to work it out when the radius equals 50, so that's the point at which we're working it out. And the thing that we want to work out is the rate at which the area is increasing, so we want the area over time. And I'm putting it down there to give us a bit of space for working out. Okay, now to get the area, or the, the rate of change of the area, we need to use the, the rate that we've been given. So start with dr by dt, and then figure out how to turn it into dA by dt. So we need to introduce that dr on the bottom, so that it cancels out that dr on the top of dr by dt. And 
we need an extra dA in there so that we end up with dA over dT when those dRs cancel out. So we need to work out dA by dR by differentiating A and we get 2 pi R. Substitute in the things that we've worked out for dr by dt and dA by dr. And then put in R is 50 to be able to work out um, what our rate is when the radius is 50. And that will be in millimetres squared per second because we're talking about the area which would be measured in millimetres squared over the time which is measured in seconds. OK, a water tank has a rectangular base 1.5 metres by 1.2 and vertical sides. Uh, water is being added at a rate of 0.45 millimetre, uh, metres cubed per minute. We want to work out the rate the depth of the water is changing um, over this time. So we're told a rate first of all, that's the, the thing that we have to write down, we're told how the volume is increasing over time and that's 0.45. Then we want to um, just put in a, a value for the depth. And I'm going to call it H because I don't want to get confused with extra Ds in there. So we'll talk about H for the height of the water. Now we can write a formula where the volume is equal to 1.8H. And then we can write down the rate we want to know, which is dH by dt, because it's how the um, height of the water is changing over time. That will be the rate we started with, dv by dt, times by dh to introduce that into the equation, and dv to cancel out with that dv. So dv by dh we can get by differentiating v, so that would be 1.8. Then substitute it into our equ equation. We need to use 1 over 1.8 because we want dh over dv, but we've actually worked out dv over dh, so we just flip it over calculate what that is. Now this is an example of one of those questions where we didn't need to do it at a particular point because the rate was constant. Um, once we got that dv by dh it was 1.8, just a number by itself, so we didn't need to substitute in a value to calculate it at.